Good morning. Let's start with our second episode. Hopefully this will be a little bit better now since I'm getting back into the swing of things, but we'll see. Alright, so this is chapter two, essentially. The introduction of the main characters. Uh, the Assassins. XER's heroes are the Assassins from the Middle East. Uh, assassin warriors. They've been in a great effort to overthrow their corrupted Seljuk dynasty. The meaning of assassin, is, uh, assassin originates from people who use hashishi. Stemming from smoking, hashishi is a means to raise their fighting spirit for approaching battles. Then later, Christian's deployment of the Order of the Temple, Templar and the Order of his Hospitaller also contributed to the meaning of the fierce assassination spread throughout the two orders. Since then, the word assassin is associated with assassinations. The assassin sheikh Hassan i Hassaba established Al Mud Council, Eagle's Nest, as the headquarters to train a number, a great number of warriors. During the ten, during year 1090, Saba remained in the castle for 35 years until his death at age 90. It is believed he never once left the castle. Truly, the assassin's leader is a special thing. It is said as well. The Albert Castle's uh, garden is where they harvested all the fruits of the world, a shrine decorated in gold, a stream of grape wine, milk, and honey flowing in abundance. And by the shore, many beautiful women playing music, while hypnotically dancing, allowing one to forget the time. So, so definitely a place of, like, of, uh, I forgot the word I was going to say. However, the reality of this paradise seemed to be all an hallucination from the use of hashishi. That is because when teenagers joined, they were surely bestowed with hashishi. For these teenagers, they would not always experience paradise, for when the sheik gives an order, they would become terrifying murderers. Now, Sadler, what great effort will you do? That will be the calling of the master's hand. So this leads into page 13. So this is Sadler, as depicted in this art form. Sadler is a warrior born in 1104, 20 years old, Scorpio, blood type, a blood type. The most skillful assassin warrior excels at all martial arts and swordsmanship. At the time, not even a single person could match Sadler himself. With this, with his perfect tactics, he would not give, he would not only give agonizing to death to his targets. Instead, they died with intense pleasure. Hmm, so weird. Seljuk and the army snatched both of his parents at a young age and left him mortally wounded where the assassins took him in to, in to aid him, or so it is sold. The truth of where his birthplace is completely unknown. Then we have Rumi here, or as they have it spelled as Lurmi, which is not the uh, Western version at least. So Rumi is a spy agent born in 1108, age 16, blood type 0. Assassin's founding Sheik's uh, biological daughter, daughter. So. She is the daughter of Saba, I believe. One of the few women in Assassin. Secretly, she desires for Sadler, despite being a quick tipper tomboyish daughter. With a slender body, she is extremely light, performing air like acrobatics. She is fluent in eight languages. Then we have Shabaf. I think this is actually supposed to be Saba. Shaba. Uh, but they have a Shabaf. Um, assassin religious organizations, assassin Sheik, born in the year 1024, the rest is unknown. When he was young, he was a passionate Islamic follower who, due to the neglected and impoverished populace and the oppression of the corrupt government and military, decided to form the unorthodox Islamic assassination religion. Religious organization assassins, aiming to overthrow the very source of the land's degradation, the Orthodox soldier kingdom, Caliph. So that was a little wordy, but uh, basically, he's the main leader guy. He's aiming to remove uh, the caliph of Islam, or of that area at least. Then we got Kindi. <clears throat> so 
So, member of the fighters, fighter trainers. So, born in 1092, 30 years old. He's a Taurus. Blood type unknown. A large man of an unmatched superhuman strength who trained many warriors within the Assassin's Alamut Fortress. It is said not even steel can pierce through his hardened muscle. A devoted to, man devoted to all of them. Alright, now next is Fakili, which is all the way over here. Fakili is the sorcerer, unknown date of birth, AB blood type. Nobody quite knows the nature of this person. Religious founder, Saba's favorite comrade. His sorcery included astrology, Kabbalah, alchemy, Kabbalah, alchemy mnemonics, which is a weird thing, medical practice, and other variety of arts within his mind. His magical powers were the greatest of Islam, so it is said. Now, Sufrawaldi, which is the... Sufrawaldi? I don't know. I don't, never really get the pronunciation right. He was a, so this guy's a scientist, born in 1100. Gemini, B blood type, and tall man with piercing eyes and sharp mind, boasting 180 IQ. With a controlled emotion, he is prepared to objectively analyze Islamic law. With profound knowledge of natural matters, he's considered alchemy, sorcery, and other esoterics to be a product of ignorance and felt contempt to those who practiced it. Fakili does not trust the nature of Sephirati. Doesn't really come to in play though. It's just relevant as far as the game's concerned. Then the Caliph of Saljuku. Or Rome. The way I, I try to do with our actual Khalifa of Seljuk. The Orthodox Seljuk dynasty caliph who targeted after who targeted after Sadler. Regarding his politics, he used his power for selfish demands without a single concern of the populace's lives, or so it is believed. Furthermore, the cause of great oppression during the conflict of Islam in the world. So he's the main baddie. So, the rest of this is a lot of um, <clears throat> starting the game, or starting using the, the, uh, uh, the computer, which I won't go into. You can maybe read it you want but mostly like it goes into how to turn on the game and insert the disc which uh, system you're using any precautions and stuff like that it's not it's you know it's not too relevant then chapter four is like game operations this is tell you how to use the the, uh, the aspects of it so you got RPG uh, scene the Action scene, the hideout scene, which is the main menus. And then you got the actual showing of the, um, the interface. Which, if you look at this, I think it's like a camera shot of it too. So it's kind of very, um, I don't know, independent at times. <laughs> like that indie feel, low budget. But it's like the RPG scene that they call it. Just the top down. And this is the action scene, as they call it, which is side view. And then the hideout scene. I mean, it's information that is pretty, pretty obvious. It's not like it's going to be, you know. And this goes into a lot of information. Um, So this is just going to other information like um, items, magic weapons. Um, <clears throat> although there's, I think, something about the magic part that's worth reading. Uh, Sadler may use spells in the action scenes as well as Fakili may use spells in, his, in the hideout scene. However, Sadler and Fakili must learn to spell, otherwise they cannot use the spell. Fakili will teach Sadler spells with every level achieved. Sadler to use spells, all action scenes using magic is for attacking. There are five type spell types. Fakili uses spells that alters both Sadler's AP and AC. However, AP and AC increases spells will become invalid once re-equipped. Re See, this one is confusing because as far as I know, Fakili never uses spells. <laughs> like, there is no 
the first film. Um, and I don't understand that quip um, that's, um, in that regard. I think... I don't know. I think if it looks something they were going to implement and never did, I, I don't know. Or I'm just really dumb. <laughs> or, or maybe I just poorly translated it. Who knows? Uh, weapons is really the same stuff. Just talking about types of weapons he would get. So, oh yeah, this is like an interesting blurb here. Like, this shows how much research they put into it, how much thought they put into it. So, there's like, they explicitly use the K magic and they wanted to distinguish that. So, in this little box here. So, magic and magic, the difference between it. The greatest magician to live in modern century, Alistair Cap Crowley, designed the word magic as an action of the mind, defining the two spellings, magic and magic. The common spelling, magic, meaning the escaping from reality. Also those with uh, selfish desires you also those using it with selfish desire use black magic. Besides opposing traditional English spelling, the term magic is taught is a taught method to apply one's mind and body to oneself. Our CXCR's hero salary certainly uses magic and not magic. So this is like a weird distinguishment of it. I don't really I I feel like it's interpretation of Alistair Crowley is a bit, you know, to, um, I don't know the word for it, but he wasn't the greatest guy in the world. <laughs> That's all I'll say. <clears throat> so it goes into a little bit of the items, which is kind of useful because you got the, uh, the uh, healing items that you will know, the AC ones, the AP which is pretty useful, especially early on in the game. It's it's uh, very difficult. Um, there's like some descriptions of like his hookah uh, attachment. Um, there's also some more descriptions of like HP, MP. I just like that. I think this is actually talking about drugs in them in them themselves. So let me can go into that. Drugs are the medicines of XCR that range in effects from restoring HP to antidotes. Also, some effects for a limited time may also increase the capacity of HP and MP. While some medicines also increase AP attack power and AC uh, defensive power, they can also increase the capacity of HP and MP for a limited time. It's kind of redundant. I don't know why. I could have just removed that one. Uh, <clears throat> so, basically, you know, certain things can cause increase of, uh, of health, uh, which is LSD and Yobo. Um, magic points would be like magic mushrooms and um, fly ag agaric. <laughs> and um, attack power would be Chocolate, coffee, speed, cocaine, steroids, and defensive powers, alcohol. Daranzu, I think that's, yeah, Daranzu, opium, ether, morphine, heroin, even aspirin. <laughs> uh, then some unique, some will have unique uh, effects, which can lead to like levitation and stuff like that. But they don't tell you that, uh, that information. And then more information about kind of just sketches. Where's the telling like what kind of stuff she has, like earrings and uh, a necklace. And then this is the warning about use of drugs in this case. So more side of more on side effects. Here, there are types of drugs when used. Each HP and MP meters max and re remaining health increases. On uh, there are types of drugs when used. Each HP, health, health point and magic point meters maxed. Maximum HP and remaining health increases or AP and AC will sharply increase, among other effects. That doesn't 
That's not written very well to be spoken. This may allow you to gain enormous advantages. However, there are side effects that may hinder your advantage at the same time. When a side effect happens, each each uh, HP and MP remaining amount, a AP and AC values will decrease. During this instant, death can happen. Side effects can be prevented or cutting the drug's effects time by taking a re taking a re rehabilitation drug, which they give as papuron. Uh, and my note here is like papuron is a papuron cold medicine, <laughs> but um. And this is like uh, Sofavarati, whatever his name is, um, warning him to not you know, take medicine so recklessly. But essentially, you can die basically if you have uh, if you don't take consideration of your health points. If it goes too low into the negatives, you'll just drop dead basically. And this actually goes into the uh, heart monitor the biorhythm, which I'll read a little bit on. Let's see what's the time on this right now. we got 60 minutes, good. More on biorhythm. On the right bottom screens, biorhythm, settlers, H, uh, AP and AC values change will be shown. When certain drugs are used, this wave will reflect the changes of AP and AC values. Successful use is a most uh, must during battle to gain an advantage. So this reflects basically your attack power and then your um, defensive power. And, and it will actually show you like how that looks or represented. So this is like normal. And if it's very janky, it's gonna kind of, um, you gotta like a time or like a specific, specific point before, um, your um, range, I guess, is maximum. And then if it's low, if it's high. So in most cases, it doesn't make a difference. I mean, I imagine this, these two would be more important, and of course, they're natural. But this one, I haven't really noticed a significant hindrance or timing issue because the game runs really fast and it seems to not matter. And this is more user information. This is actually just about uh, technical uh, troubleshooting, basically. It's nothing really interesting. And just more advertisements, um, game advertisements. I think some cases you can get like a special card or uh, user club perks and stuff like that. I think you can't even get like special signed um, um, like covering for your games and you can put that on it. I mean it's pretty nifty that they were doing all this uh, social club things which I thought was pretty cool. And then we got this long blurb which is actually a quote from as I call it, the paragraph of doom. Um, it's basically a quote from the Ma Count of Monte Cristo. Cristo. It's I. You just read the original quote. I mean, there's no. I try to keep it. I try not to. Um, I try to keep the everything at least my creation or not my creation, my translation. I try not to insert someone else's translation or a better translation. So this will be a subpar version of it. Um, but I would highly suggest looking at the actual English translation of uh, The Count of Monte Cristo, which is a fabulous book, by the way. It's worth reading. <laughs> um, but let me read the quote, at least. Have you ever heard the, the name, The Old Man of the Mountain? This name is inspired by this magnificent mountain that forms a valley where the Sani Saba planted his gardens. In these gardens is a brilliant castle where youths were enticed by the plant. As Marco Polo wrote, when eating 
When Eaton transported them to this paradise of beautiful flowers blooming on trees, abundant ripened fruit, and plenty of beautiful virgin women. This visage was simply an hallucination enjoyed by the blissful intoxicated use, so much so that they would give heart and body to anyone as if God's mandate, if they were rewarded with the hedonistic paradise. Willing to throw their own entire being and life for this reward, this miracle herb, before you brings a blend a taste of life's pleasure that not even an agonizing death can steal it. But the quote's a little bit better and plus a little bit more um, full if you look at the book. Because this is just a shortened version of it. Um, but it's basically just a romanticism about the assassin tribe. Um, but yeah, that's that's the man <laughs> and the credit staff, which I did not translate. So, because it's just names, and names are very different than words. But it's best to at least show it. So yeah, we'll come back and we'll actually be playing the game. So thank you for enduring the boring part of the manual. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, good day.